Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Um, I'm here to talk about how to keep and develop a strong culture um, as employees are hired and work remotely. So in 2014, we had 22 employees working at Trello. We were all in New York City. Uh, right now, today, uh, we are actually, uh, someone else just accepted when I was in the Uber over, and we're 86 employees uh, worldwide. So where, where do our uh, Trello employees live? So throughout the United States, all over, Hawaii, Texas, uh, Connecticut, Atlanta, <laughs> you name it, um, Minnesota, Minneapolis, all over the United States. We also have Canada, Brazil, Austria, Peru, Sweden, Switzerland, and we're hiring in uh, Germany and England right now. So one of the things I want to talk about is uh, remote friendly is all or nothing. So even if you just have one employee working for you that's not in your office, you need to think about the policies and procedures that you have in your company to make them feel included, um, to make them feel part of the company, and to be um, even with everybody else. So it takes a bit of work. Um, I'm going to talk about each one of these things. So the first one is called Trello Together that we do. That's our all-company retreat. So once a year, we bring the whole company together. Last February, uh, we all went to Puerto Rico. And the whole point of the trip is to have fun, no work. If you need to see each other face to face to work, that means something else is broken in uh, the system. So we went hiking, we went uh, salsa dance lessons, we did kayaking, we had lots of meals and the teams were able to have that time to bond and become, uh, to get to know each other a little bit better. We also have an internal program that the People Team sponsors called Mr. Rogers. So every other week we pair up four employees to have a conversation about anything other than work. And this is all done via video. Um, so all of our meetings are on video. Uh, and this event is also on video. We use a Trello board to manage it. Um, and it's really fantastic because you can take a look and see what other people have discussed. We've had people write music and songs together. We've had people play games together. We have people share a beer. You pull it up to the video and you cheers virtually. And it's important to work on and establish those uh, bonding moments, those water cooler moments, those moments when you're having a coffee and having a conversation. You actually have to build that in. It's also important that you have an onboarding process for your new hires that works no matter where you're located. So we try, if possible, to have our remote uh, new employees have their first week in our New York City office. After that, they go home and work from us, for us from there. But with Trello, what we can do is no matter where they are, they have the same process and same experience. Uh, there's a list of tasks that the company does before they start. There's a list of tasks for them to do on their first day. There's a list of tasks for the first week. And then there's information on policies. But then a fantastic one is we have who is everybody? Who's, who's in New York? Who's remote? Each employee has a Trello card. And on the back is information. When did they start the company? What's the best way to reach them? What's their preferred communication tool? Um, favorite uh, hobbies, things like that. And then you get a face with a name and you get to learn at your own pace everybody in the company from anywhere, from Brazil, from Texas. And then you have to have new uh, guidelines that are consistent. So one of ours is now we have uh, a mandatory overlap time. So no matter where you are in the world, we ask that you are online and working between 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern time. Our headquarters is in New York, so we needed to pick something and that made sense. So some people start earlier, some people start later, but if you're online and working that day, you're not out sick, you're not on vacation, that means anybody can get a hold of you, from the CEO to a designer, a developer, someone in sales, myself, we can get a hold of you. Um, in terms of some other new things that we've had to establish, I talked about our interview process a little bit. It became all virtual. So we, our meetings are done uh, and our interviews are done over video. So we've had to make some changes, uh, but it's worth it. 
our company culture has evolved organically to one that um, is inclusive of all cultures and people. We now have people working all over the world, and that's fantastic. Not everyone wants to move to New York City. So we have a great uh, diverse culture in terms of age even. We have a lot of working parents, which is pretty unique for a young startup. Um, I think out of our 85-person um, company, we have probably over 50 children amongst us. I personally am a mother. I have two sons. It creates work-life balance because of that. I can leave work at 4.30 every day, pick up my sons, do homework, do bath time, go to bed, and then I can go back online. You become an expert communicator because of this. I communicate to my team, oh, I'm on the subway, about to pick up my kids, be back soon. I have a, a, one of our recruiters is in North Carolina. She lets me know, oh, I'm going to the gym now. I say, great, I know you are going offline for about an hour, see you back then. You learn how to use the tools as well as possible, and each team talks about how they use the tools. For example, our sales team loves email. Our developers, not so much. So you know, if you wanna get a hold of a developer, you're going to use Slack, which is a chat system that we use, and you're not going to email them. But if you really wanna get a hold of one of our sales team members, you should email them. So each team talks about what tools they prefer, and then we get together uh, and we talk as a company, and we do this often because it's something that you have to always examine and review to make sure that you're still um, up to date on what's working for the team, especially as you have new people joining. Um, the one meeting that we have every month that is all company-wide is called our town hall. So every single person gets on the video conferencing, and it's fantastic because it is something where you see everyone's face once a month. It's the opportunity to hear from our CEO, to see demos, to uh, have the transparency of seeing all our financial numbers, to ask any questions you may have, and to meet new hires. So that's something that we do. Um, something that we've learned is that in the beginning, because back when we were only 22 people, we didn't go from um, all in uh, New York to the 60% remote. It was one person remote, two people remote. In the beginning, the New Yorkers would meet in an office and the remote people would be up on a screen and we would have the town hall that way. It wasn't, it wasn't the right way to do it. Uh, we realized really quickly and made them feel not included. So the people in New York would all get on their computer, regardless of where they were, and then we were all together doing the same thing. Um, so even if you don't have the perfect way to do it in the beginning, that's okay. Just admit, hey, we might be not doing this right, and uh, reevaluate and go from there. Um, the last one is, is this. Trello has over uh, 15 million users now, and our users are all over the world. It helps that our company can be all over the world. It helps with identifying with our users, identifying with culture. It makes our product better to have people who live all over the world building our product for people all over the world. Okay, our tools. So we use Trello for everything. I'm not just saying that. We use Trello for every single thing in our company. Our marketing team, our sales team, our developer team, my people team, you name a team, we use it. Um, we have a, every Friday, we have updates on our company overview board. Every team gives an update within Trello. Anything that we do, there's a Trello board for it. Zoom is the uh, video conferencing tool that we use. We, uh, we love that one. Appear.in is another one that we use, and Slack is our chat system. One of the things about Slack, um, there's a few channels that every new hire should join. Our announcements channel, our, our regular Trello room channel, your team group channels, but then we have a list of just really fun channels for remotes to be able to participate in. We have a small humans channel, that means children. So people are able to share pictures of their children with each other. We have a music Slack channel. We have uh, a fitness channel. We have a Trello remote channel where remotes can talk about how they're feeling and what's going on. Another thing is that we say good morning to each other every day. 
So someone working in Sweden might be saying good morning at a different time than someone in Hawaii, but you're still saying good morning to each other, and it's a nice way to connect. So our culture is our people, and that's because we are remote friendly. It's naturally evolved to be this. It's also created a work-life balance. People are able to, uh, as long as they're working a 40-hour work week and they're getting things done, that's all we care about. We have very little management. Um, we like to get out of the way of our very smart employees so they can get things done. We try and treat people as well and equally as possible. So, for example, we have benefits and perks for all of our employees. If you are in New York, you have a private office if you're a developer, and there's uh, offices for other people <laughs> as well, and there's a great open space. If you are a remote employee, we'll build you a home office so you get the same equipment, a height adjustable desk, an air on chair, whatever equipment you need to get the job done, we want you to feel like we're treating you as well as possible and equally as if you were in New York City. We have uh, a conference budget for anybody in any role. It's a $3,500 conference budget. We want you to attend conferences. If you speak at conferences, we support you. Um, and then we have uh, some great perks and benefits that are specific to New York and specific to remote employees because things are a little bit different, but we still try and the, have the main goal of treating people well. So if you're, in your, if you're in New York, we have lunch together every day. You get a monthly Metro card to commute on the subway. If you're remote, you get internet reimbursement every month for your internet. We don't need to do that for our, our HQ employees because they have our office with the internet. Um, and even things like some remote employees need a little bit more social interaction. So we support them if they choose a co-working space instead. So things like that. The main overall theme is to treat people well. And then one of the third things I like to talk about is this um, saying of don't do nothing, which is a very um, badly worded <laughs> uh, kind of jokey way of saying, um, if you see something that you think uh, is not going well or needs fixing or, hey, I have an idea, but this isn't technically my job, do something about it. So it's a way of empowering everyone in the community to help each other out and be very collaborative. Um, Trello itself is all about team collaboration. And don't do nothing is really at the heart of the company. So for example, uh, and this is a really silly example, but if I were to knock over this candlestick and forget to pick it up and then leave, you know, uh, an action of don't do nothing is this wonderful woman right here saying, you know what, I don't work here, it's not my job, but I'm going to put that back where it went. Um, and so the same thing, if you know, one of our developers would like to you know, have an idea or thinks maybe we could be doing something better in sales, don't do nothing, say something. If a designer has a suggestion for the way I'm onboarding new hires, don't do nothing, talk to me. So it really goes to the core of how we treat each other. Um, six takeaways, in, um, if I had to sum it up, um, you need buy-in from the entire company. You can't have one or two people think it's a good idea to hire remote employees. You really need to come together, have a conversation, and you know, CEO, coworkers, everybody needs to understand that there's gonna be a value with this because it's gonna take some adjustment. You need the policies and tools that support the system. So we made a lot of changes. Our interviews went from in-person to remote. Our meetings went from in-person to remote. We created uh, programs like Mr. Rogers, um, and I personally, um, every week, my people team, there's five of us, we get together and we talk about work, and every, day, every week we get together and we talk about non-work. It's forcing these other social moments. You need to constantly evaluate and check in with people in the system. I do one-on-ones with our remote employees in addition to the rest of our employees, but the conversation with them is a little bit more in-depth. 
How, how is this working? Do you have a routine? Are you getting out of the house? Are you getting exercise? Um, do you feel lonely? Do you feel connected? So have that communication with your employees. Um, making sure you're having conversations with the people in the office too. Do you feel like there's an office culture that you enjoy? You're coming into the office. Do you enjoy it? And then making sure that it's not a remote culture, an office culture, but one company culture. It takes constant work. I suggest at least one all-company retreat a year where you don't work. It's all about team bonding and getting to know each other. You go back home and you'll see your employees working uh, even more efficiently. Um, an onboarding process that is functional regardless of location. Um, I'm very biased to Trello, and I think it's one of the best ways to onboard your new hires. It doesn't matter where you're located at all. And then invest in your people team. Sometimes HR and the people team are the last ones to get support in a growing company. Um, you know, we need sales, we need engineers, we need product managers, we need all these people. And the people team who's helping grow the company and culture are often left for the last. I would suggest investing in your people team early. Um, they're going to help define your company culture. They're gonna increase your company brand. They're gonna recruit the people for you. At some point, it's gonna be overwhelming for you to do, be doing your job and recruit nonstop. Uh, so that's it, we're hiring. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of open positions. You can work from anywhere. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions about this or anything else. Sorry, but uh, my name is Camilla. I was one of the people who did not raise the hand in the beginning, so I actually have no clue what Trello is. Oh, oh that's fine, I can tell you. So Trello is a visual collabor collaboration tool that helps you get perspective on anything. So you can use it in work, you can use it in your personal life. I'll give you a few examples. In your personal life, people use it to, let's say, plan a wedding or party to help organize their moving of apartments, a baby shower, a reading book club list, cook, cooking recipes. It's a very horizontal tool. People use it for anything. In business, people are working it to work together within their team or cross team functionally. Um, and then uh, more specifically, it's uh, real time. So you have uh, web, you have mobile, it's live, so if I could do a little demo, I'd show you. But there's a board where kind of your main uh, project, let's say, lives, and then you will have lists and cards, and you're gonna be moving them around when things get completed. On the back of a card, you can have attachments, you can add members, you can have due dates, you can have uh, a lot of uh, additional um, power-ups. We integrate with a lot of things. We integrate with Salesforce, so marketing, uh, sales teams, they enjoy that Salesforce integration. Um, we integrate with uh, well, a ton of other things. They're gonna be mad at me that, yeah, Zendex, Zen, Evernote, all the things. We integrate with all the things. And uh, developers can you play with our API and uh, create their own plugins as well. So it's a way, it's a horizontal tool to give you perspective on anything you're working on from you know, you can honestly use it yourself, I have. I've planned family vacations with it, um, but we, our entire company uses it, and everything that we do has a Trello board for it. So my people team has a Trello board. I have a private pe uh, people team board that just my team members can see, not the whole company. You can have controls with that. Our CEO looks at the company overview board um, all the time. Okay, here are our company priorities. Here are the projects that are being worked under these priorities, what's the status of them. Uh, we have a kitchen Trello board for the office because in the office we have snacks and food and lunch and we keeps track of itinerary, uh, uh, inventory. So uh, there's a million, you can use it for anything, um, but that's an over, a somewhat quick answer of what is Trello. Hi Liz, thanks for coming here. Mm -hmm. uh, how does a product manager, or let's just say, uh, let's say the sales head manage teams located at various locations uh, in terms of uh, managing uh, project workflows, deliveries, or motivating the team, whatever? Because 
The question is how do managers manage with being remote or remote employees? Yeah, um, basically what's the daily like schedule of a product manager or a sales guy? And sure. Trello in New York? So um, we, every single team member of Trello has a remote employee. So even our executive team have some remotes. Our VP of sales and our VP of marketing don't live in New York. So we have examples of remote employees throughout the entire company. Um, each team is gonna have a different system. Um, and they might be doing one-on-ones for check-in. Every new employee, there's a 30, 60, 90 day review. The 30 and 60 is with the new hire and manager and the 90 days with me and the new employee. Uh, and then we talk about additional goals. But basically, um, everyone at Trello works very autonomously. Um, we're not micromanaging. Um, there's no clock in, clock out. And so in terms of um, seeing if, it's, if an employee is working, you can just see by the output. So you know the project they're working on, and you, you know if they're working on it or not. It's, it's, it's very hands-off. Um, but every team's going to be different. So our developers do stand-up meetings. I meet with my team at least once a week. Um, but each team is going to be slightly different. The sales team is a little bit more, have a little bit more rules and structured. It's very numbers-based. It's easier to do that. Um, our PMs are connecting with our VP of product, but then the team members and the developers and we just, we cross communicate so much naturally. Um, it's just, it's not a problem for us. Hi, I'm Stefan. Um, my question is, you probably have multiple teams there. Do you uh, try to always mix up with remote and local employees or is it random or is it? Yeah, that's a great question. So the answer is uh, when we have an open position, we're always looking for the best person for the job. So there's no rule now anymore. The person can, as long as they're willing to at least overlap with that 12 to four, and that's something that we'll talk about with the candidate when they apply to make sure, because depending on time zones, sometimes we want to really make sure they don't mind working at night. Um, but no, there's, if the best candidate happens to be in New York, great. If the best candidate happens to be in Florida, fine, great. Um, the only positions right now that we do prefer New York are any kind of junior sales roles that have a lot of mentorship needed. So for those roles, the more junior ones, we do ask, you know, we're looking for New York, but other than that, any location. And then depending on, we don't, what will look like in six months to a year, I, I don't know, maybe the 60% will get bigger, maybe we'll have more New York. It's, it's hard to tell because we're, we're just hiring the people that we think are best for the job. So you also have like teams where there's only one remote person? Um, do we, uh, mine. So one of my recruiters is North Carolina and um, well actually someone else is starting and they'll be remote too. But currently one in North Carolina and the three of us in New York. Because what I'm thinking, uh, we had the problem that when there are it's the majority of the team is locally, they're always talking face to face. So the person remote is left out. Is right. this a problem? No, so we force ourselves to, uh, if we have a conversation in person, if we happen to naturally. So let's say me and someone else from my team in New York happen to see each other in the kitchen and have a conversation. We go back and we type out the uh, summary. And so everyone said, Hey, by, I say, hey team, by the way, Lydia and I had a conversation in the kitchen and we're gonna be doing this next. We're gonna be hiring for this role next. And you have to work on that communication. All of our meetings are video. And then the other thing is we do encourage if people feel the need to come to the office, they can come to the office. We'll, we'll pay for that and we'll have them come visit and work out of the office if they feel the need. But usually that's not the case. But we work hard on it in terms of over communicating. So if you and I work together and we happen to have a conversation and it's you know one that has importance, right? We'll type, retype it out in our team chat room and repeat it. We just said this, this is gonna be the new direction or hey, guess what? Instead of two designers, we'll be hiring three designers even if they're not gonna be the ones working on it. So let's say the, the person I'm looping in doesn't hire designers, they still wanna know. So it's just that sense of, of over communicating. Hello. Hello. Uh, on Monday, yes. you spoke about uh, the, the equity you oh, yeah. gave to each of your new employees. Yes. Perhaps it could be interesting. Okay. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. 
Um, so that's true. An offer package at Trello, um, every single role. So what it's going to look like is you have your salary line, you have your equity line, and then a list of benefits and perks. Every single role at Trello comes with equity uh, because we're uh, looking for people to have a part of the company, and that is part of our company culture is we're going to treat you as well as possible, and we want you to be rewarded for the work that you're doing for us. So in addition to a salary, which, oh, by the way, it's New York-based salary, no matter where you live. So uh, depending on where you live uh, and your cost of living is less than New York, it's a very fantastic salary. Some places are equivalent to New York. Some places cost of living might be more than New York. But again, that's part of the equal level. And we our headquarters are New York, so that's what we went with. Um, but yes, everyone has a, a portion of the company with equity. Um, yes. And then in terms of the benefits and perks, for the United States, we have fantastic health insurance. And I put the parentheses for the United States. It's 100% covered. Um, Trello pays for every single thing, so it's no cost to the employee, which is for the United States, unheard of. Um, we have matching 401k. We have the conference budget. We buy you a new cell phone every year because we want Trello to be the best on every new device. We pay for your gym membership every month. We pay for the internet for the remote employees. We pay for the travel for the HQ employees. Um, we build out that home office, so there's there's a lot to offer um, someone who wants to work at Trello. Uh, we take one last question, and then we switch. And for I'll be hanging out, so for anyone who has additional questions, I'm happy to answer anything. Um, I'm just wondering, for when you're hiring someone, um, is there anything that will tell you any triggers to say this is someone who I'd like to have off-site or who would be a bad person on-site? What kind of things do you look for when interviewing? So a, so a couple things about our interview process that I can touch upon. One, every interview for Trello is task-oriented. So developers code, salespeople do a sales pitch, marketing, do a marketing campaign. Every role, you're going to be doing the work that we're looking for. So that's one way to see the actual skill-based. And through that, you'll be able to you know, get a little bit of sense of, especially because they're doing it remotely, in the interview process, you're seeing how they're working remotely. So that helps. The other thing is, um, and I've learned in my week here in France, one of the differences is cover letters are actually very important for us. Uh, I reread every single cover letter, and we want it to be written for Trello. I don't want it to look like something that has been applied to five different companies and you just plugged the word Trello into our, the, the slot. Um, so cover letters, uh, the task oriented, and then the very first part of our interview process is a conversation with a member of the people team. And we're gonna go over things like, are you looking to relocate to New York or if they already work in New York, continue to work in New York? Are you looking to work remotely? And then depending on how they answer, we're gonna dig down into that. Um, have they worked remotely before? Is this the first time? Why do they wanna work remotely? What do they think might be difficult for them working remotely? If they have worked remotely before, what were some accomplishments? What were some failures? We wanna hear it all. So a lot of uh, uh, poking and conversations about that remote element. Um, but really then the rest of the process is a, is a great, testament to how they do because how are they communicating with our interviewers over Zoom? Or it's not up anymore, but over Zoom, right? Um, actually, sometimes we work on Trello together on an interview Trello board. How are we communicating in Trello? How are we communicating in Zoom? How are we communicating um, in the email written forth between our recruiting coordinator and the candidate? All that gets taken into consideration so um, it's the whole package of the interview process. So usually it's a, we review the cover letter and resume. It's a conversation with the people team. It's then a series of task-oriented interviews. It's gonna change depending on the position. And then it's a conversation with our CEO, Michael Pryor. He still meets with everybody in the company. And then after that, uh, there may be an offer. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey,